Hey, what's up guys? We are just uh, hanging out at the right of way. It's 3.30 in the afternoon. It is one of the coldest days that it's been so far, I think. Yeah. And uh, we've made one weld this morning. It was uh, took a couple days to get that weld ready. We finally got it made. Uh, we started at like one o'clock, I think. We sat all morning and started about one, one o'clock, give or take. Finished it up, sitting in the truck now. I got tons of layers on in this new welding jacket I got darn tough socks that you guys heard me talk about smart wool socks toe warmers my twisted x loafers and then them pullover boots them lacrosse pullover boots and then uh 4.0s blue jeans coveralls and then t-shirt under armor long sleeve uh another long sleeve thick winter hoodie vest and then this so i got tons of layers on i've had several helpers since i've been here I don't think I've introduced you guys to any of them, but now I've got one. I think I'll probably have the rest of the job, most likely. His name is uh, Devin. This is Devin. How y'all doing? He's uh, he's from Alabama, right? Yes, sir. What part of Alabama are you from? Uh, Red Level, Alabama. Yeah. And how long? You're how old? 21. 21 years old. How long have you been pipelining? Uh, about two years. Two years, but you've been welding since? I was 18. Since so he was 18, so? About four years, something like that. Yeah. He just helped when he took the opportunity to help, right? Yeah. Tell us a little bit about tell us a little bit about why you're why you're helping. I had the option to come in seven ninety eight as a helper or stay non union as a welder and I just I'd been trying to get in seven ninety eight for a while so I took the option while the opportunity was available. And then that's probably one of the best options or the best choices I've made 
between everything. That way, you know, you get all my benefits and all, and then I get to go, I'm gonna be able to go up to the hall in March, take my test and all. Just one of the better opportunities, you know, it was just a choice I had to take, either the pay cut for now, and then it's gonna be better in the long run, or stay where I was at. Yeah, that's uh, smart in my eyes. When he first told me that, I was like, man, that's smart to take the opportunity, because 798 is hard to get in sometimes, especially if you don't know anybody, and even when they are needing help, you still gotta kind of know somebody, you know, as far as a good reference, you know, to put down. So I just thought it was real, I admire Devin for doing that, you know, uh, just taking the taking the opportunity to, to get in as a helper. It's smart, so very, very smart. But anyway, that's cool, man, that's cool. Alabama, good old Alabama. Man, you think we're gonna make another wheel today? I doubt it, I highly not, doubt it. It's not looking like it. Can't never tell out here. It's literally changes every 10 minutes. They will have big plans of making three whales in a day and then turn around, might only make one, you might make six that night. You don't ever know. But how cold is it right now, you think? My truck still still says 18, but I don't think, well, I don't have service right here. Chad so. said something earlier about, like, negative 11, but I don't think it's that cold outside. But Yeah, it's sure enough colder than 18, I think. Yeah. With, with the wind chill, wind's what's making it cold, but it's probably, yeah, I don't know. A lot better than I thought I was going to be down in that bell hole. Yeah, it wasn't you know, that bad down there when we was actually doing stuff. Yeah. But I think it is the coldest day since I've been up here. I've been up here a few weeks longer than you, but the coldest day I've seen so far. Tomorrow is supposed to be even colder, I think. Anyway, just want to introduce you guys to uh, to Devin. And so anyway, that's what we got going on. I've had some questions on what I what I do to keep like fuel from, from freezing up in my truck and my, my weld machine because they're both diesel, truck and welder both. In the past, I've used just kind of any additive like additive to keep your stuff from gelling up i've used f-bomb that's what mechanic back home sells and really recommends but i've used a couple different kinds here at the warehouse they got what they call marvel mystery oil and that's what i've been using that's what uh andy uses my well important that's what he's always used in his 200 and stuff during the winter time i think he might use it all the time but anyway so i put that in my well machine i haven't had any issues with it freezing up in this cold weather or anything so it's real good stuff I put it in my welding machine and my pickup. Anyhow, that's what's going on. We'll see what happens. They got a, we cut a road is what we did down here. That weld, we, they cut a road and a creek. They had the road and the creek was right next to it. I think from what we're hearing over the radio, they gotta, gotta get that creek back before they do anything else. So that's what makes us think we may not be able to make those last two welds here. So today anyway, but we'll see what happens. This here's the weld. We got a weld wrap on it now, but that there's the weld that we made this morning. Side of a hill. This here's the road that we cut. These here are road plates. They're about one inch thick. They're made out of grade 50 or better, maybe like harder material. Just a really strong mild steel, and we use them to cover up the ditch that way local traffic can still well really any traffic can still travel up and down the road while we're getting the pipe in the ground even though it's not a very busy road they still have a time limit on this road anytime they cut open a road like this they have a time limit they got to get it put back in within a certain amount of time I don't know the exact time on this job but pretty handy that tan piece of pipe that bigger piece of pipe there is what we call a flume pipe that's probably a 30 or 36 inch but that's just to keep this creek flowing while we're putting this creek section in so that's what that is a flume pipe all right yeah that's the status of what's going on i'm gonna head back to the truck i'll stop here and introduce you guys to andy and his helper this is andy andy and chance hello where uh where are you from andy Missouri. Where were you? Where were you born? California. Born in California. Yeah. Chance, where are you from? Oak Grove, Louisiana. Oak Grove, Louisiana. There's many of them from there, isn't there? Yeah, good pen. Okay, Chance, how long? How long you been pipelining? About two years. Two years. Andy, <laughs> how long you been pipelining? Well, since I've been in, in the union, 55 years, almost six years altogether. Yeah. I normally ask people what all states have they been to, 
but somebody like you, I like to ask, what all states have you not been to? Have you not worked in? Northeast, mainly, Vermont. I think you told me you hadn't worked in Alaska or Hawaii, mm -hmm. but, but your dad worked in Alaska, right? right? On the Alaskan pipeline? Right. Yeah, all the Northeast states, the small states, Delaware, Vermont, places like that, been to Maine. Yeah. But that's only Northeast, really Northeast I've been. But you've been to, but you've actually worked out of the state. Yeah, I've been out overseas five different times. How many? Five? Five, five different times? Now that's the coolest thing to me. I can't get over how cool that is. Let's see, what, what, what year were you born? I never did ask. What year were you born? 45. 45, so you're 73 years old, is that right? Mm -hmm. What was the pay whenever you first started pipelining as a helper? 75 cents an hour. 75 cents an hour, so yeah. that's a huge difference from back then to today, but obviously with inflation, everything changes, but uh, so that's crazy. 75 cents an hour, and the welding machine Andy has is a uh, 63 model, and you bought it brand new in 63. Right. And it was, how, how much did you spend on that? $750. That's crazy. That is plum crazy. That's nice with leads and oil and uh, antifreeze in it. And still got yeah. it today. The same machine. Mm -hmm. Have you owned any other machines? I did own one. My, this was my dad's original. To when I got it, he really there wasn't much in it because he run the welders all the time. Yeah. That's so cool. That is so neat. And then I, when he passed away, I got it. I took it and sold mine. Sold mine to Roy Zander Jr. No, uh, I, I bet in Indianapolis, Indiana, where I sold it at, to him. Is he, is he your age or how's? No, nah, he's a little bit younger than I am, not much. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to introduce you guys to Andy and Chance. Uh, that's who I've been working with the past month, I guess, a little over a month now on this mm -hmm. job. I feel I feel very blessed and fortunate to be working with Andy because he's got a lot of experience and uh, just been neat, a lot to learn, a lot, a lot of stories, <laughs> plenty, lot plenty of stories. more. Yeah. yeah. Lots of, we haven't really got into storytelling today, but I just want to introduce you guys to them so you guys would know them. And, uh, but yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, I got for, a lot more. Yeah, lots of stories. Very, very enjoyable. I love hearing, <coughs> I love hearing all the stories. You're married. How long have you been married? 47 years. 47 years. And she don't, she don't travel with you nowadays, mm -hmm. but you said she did back years ago. Yeah, right? before, before the kids got in school, years prior to that, yeah. when they started school. I was jerked around, so I didn't. I said I'd never do that to my kids, and I should have. You you should have jerked them around. Yeah, excuse me. No, you're fine. Have. You're fine. No, don't worry about that. Yeah, I should have jerked them around, made them go where I did. Yeah, it would have worked out pretty good for me. So you travel by yourself nowadays? Did you? I mean, I guess you just gotten used to it. You done it for so many years, huh? Yeah, and she comes kind of visit every now and then. Yeah, but nothing permanent. Took her down to Louisiana and parked her in the ghetto. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, she got mad. <laughs> she didn't like that, huh? Uh, that was the last time. <laughs> that was the whole deal about buying the trailer. She's going, you know, kids is out and gone. Go with you. She's going to go with me again. It was right after Katrina, and they had one of them uh, refugee camps right across the street. She was scared to death the whole time she was there. Really? It was bad. How long was y'all there? Oh, I was down there seven, eight months. Um, I had to go back to Kansas and make some eight dig outs on the Rockies Express. And when I dropped her off in Missouri, she said that was it for her. She, stayed. she said, I'm gonna stay here. You go on yeah, the next one. She ain't been back no more. You said Katrina or uh yeah. when what year was that? That was I don't really remember oh seven. Seven. That's what I had I'm in mind. Yeah. I was on a paddle boat. Huh? I was on a paddle boat when that happened. Say it again. I was in a paddle boat. He was on a paddle boat, paddling a boat, he hadn't changed the diaper but <laughs> two or three times. Yeah. What year were you born, Chance? Well, 98, but I was down there in Baton Rouge and all that, all them swamps flooded. How old were you in 07? You'd have been nine? Yeah. There you go. It might be before 07. You, got, you, said you, you said you grew up on the road, right? All my life. <laughs> yeah. Since I was about nine. <laughs> so, so you're kind of used to this lifestyle, mm -hmm. traveling and stuff. That's neat. I think that's real neat. I interviewed uh, I interviewed Jeff Clark uh, on that first union job I was on. 
I told you about him. He grew up being drug all over the country pipeline. You know, that's all his dad ever did, you know, with the union and everything. And uh, so whenever he got older and had kids, he said the same thing. He said he wasn't going to take his kids on the road. So that's what his kids have stayed home and went mm -hmm. to public schools, you know, one area. And, you know, he swore up and down he wasn't going to drag his kids all over either. Yeah. But it has its pros and cons, I guess. I mean, you. I met a lot of people, but, I, you know, I was in uh, one year, I was in school in Texas. Illinois, Iowa, and Tennessee in one year. Four or five schools? Yeah. Four. Man, I didn't know that's why I'm so slow behind. They were told my, my mom said, boy, I said, my brother and my sister are both up real smart. I mean, genius type of smart. You wasn't anywhere long enough? No, I wasn't nothing, close to that. For nothing to sink in. The only thing I can remember about Elton being when I was up in Illinois, my hair froze while I was waiting at the bus stop. Golly, that's, that's cold. how cold it was. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have long hair back then yeah. as a kid? Yeah. My dad, I got pictures of my I, dad when he was she a kid. Just, my mom just fixed the water, <laughs> combed it or something, and got water in it. Yeah. By the time I walked to the bus stop, that was harder than a brick bat. <laughs> it froze. Didn't need no gel. Yeah. Got stabbed up there in school. You got stabbed? Yeah, a girl got pissed off at me. Stabbed me in the back of the arm with a pencil. That mother went plumb to the meat, or bone, I guess. But the lead on that pencil, she just sharpened it. Yeah. The lead broke off that son and it's still in there today. And if you were a kid, they didn't lead used to be worse than what it is? Now? Well, I don't know, but it's still in there. That's the, that's the rumor, is because yeah. I've got, I've had a pencil in my knee and I still got a little piece of lead, but I mean, yeah. I was told it wasn't as, but I mean, you're still, you're still going strong. Yeah. It was hard. It ain't hurt me yet. She got jealous. I don't know why. I never didn't know nothing about love back here. And then the teacher told me, said, uh, I had a pencil. It's a brand new one. I just sharpened it. This boy sitting in the desk next to him went up there and told the teacher that was his pencil. She said, Andy. I said, what? She said, give that boy his pencil back. I said, that ain't his pencil. She said, yeah, it is. I said, he said, yeah, it is. I said, no, it ain't. She said, Andy, give the boys pencil back. I said, I ain't doing it. <laughs> we argued about that about 30 minutes. She said, by God, I said, give him his pencil back, and I mean now. So I broke something in half. <laughs> I said, he can have this end. I'm keeping the one with the eraser. <laughs> well, she got mad at You settled that, didn't you? Yeah, I said, yeah, he can have half of it. I'll take the other half. <laughs> I was up there in Zion, Illinois. I'll never forget that long to live. How old were you, roughly? I don't, you don't even remember. Know. I mean, grade school, high yeah, school. Yeah, grade I mean, school. Did you get into a lot of trouble traveling as a kid? Yeah. Like in school? Because, yeah. because you, like you, do you ever remember thinking that you, you might be moving anyway, so it doesn't matter? Do you ever remember no, thinking that? I just remember I didn't like none of the money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got in a fight there. We were down in Texas. Went to the show on Saturday. And I'll never forget the name of the show. That's been a long time. I was a little, called Lolita. It was kind of a X-rated show. Nobody knew it. I was first in line. I'd been standing in line 30 minutes. And hell, I'm standing there for a little bit, and this little kid come up there, and he just started rooting me out. I said, what the man? I said, get back at the back of the line. I said, that's my spot. Well, his brother took a swat at me. And the boy hit me, clipped me right on the end of the nose. Had my money in my hand. So he, when he did, he hit my hand, knocked my money, went out in the street. So I walked out there real slow, got my money, put it in my pocket. I come back over and I knocked fire from his ass, buddy. <laughs> knocked him down, that little kid looked at me like that, and I said, I'll give you one too, you little bastard. And I got my place back in line. I said, there, I went in the show. That boy come down there and said, I'll see you after the show's over with. I said, that's fine. So we got out and got to walking home. I seen him up there about a block ahead of me. So I kind of trotted on up there. I see if he won't do anything, because I know I'd, I done nailed him pretty good. And I, he had to be thinking about it. Yeah. He didn't want no more. So yeah. that, was, that was all of that. So how old were you when you when you first worked on the pipeline with your dad? 14. 14 years old. And that was just mostly during the summers? Mm-hmm. Yeah. At first? Yeah. At 75 cents an hour, I made enough money that first year to buy all my school clothes and pay all my school lunches. That's wild. Yeah. 
and go to the show every Saturday. And that was just that was just seventy five cents an hour. They didn't have per diem back then, right? Mm, no nice per diem. Mm. Per diem that what two thousand or it ain't 90s been very long. It ain't been very no. long. Yeah. No, we didn't have no per diem. Well, I never had my money either. I couldn't even get, handle my check. <laughs> my mother wouldn't let me have it. <laughs> She'd take it. So I said, well, I need some money. No. This is your school clothes <laughs> and your school lunches. Nobody got that minute to it. Yeah. Uh, what was the 75 cents an hour on the pipeline? So that was obviously more than, like, what did, like, a normal job around the house pay? About a quarter an hour at home. Just give us some perspective. Because I've done what you did. I carried cement in the wheelbarrow for them bricklayers. Yeah. When I was 13 one summer, and that didn't pay. <laughs> work tons of hours to make any money. Oh, Lord, God. <laughs> yeah, that's work. Call yeah, you go to the show back in for get in, I get a quarter. Go to the show. Dime to get in. Dime for popcorn and a nickel for a large Coke. <laughs> quarter. Yeah, for a quarter. See a movie. Nowadays, it's, what is it nowadays? Chance? For a movie. Six dollars to get in. For At a least, movie? If not more nowadays. It's more than that going yeah. to a nice one, about eight dollars probably. Yeah. I'm I'm pretty sure I paid eleven or twelve now. Oh yeah, easy. On oh, oh the the popcorn's eight dollars. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Popcorn was a dime. The movie was a dime, and the large coke and that coke was like that, and that big rent was a nickel. Um, that's wild. That is plum wild. It's a different world. That's when I started world. dipping snuff, it's thirty cents a can. When I quit, it was three dollars or something a can. Oh, gas. Yeah. I can remember gas being fifteen cents a gallon. When I was in high school. Driving age 16 back then, mm -hmm. too? Yeah, when we first started out, me and my cousin went. My dad took him with me, with us. But he he's a, he become a doctor, and he paid for all his schooling through pipeline helping. He, he, he strawed from my dad quite a bit when I was in the Marine Corps. Yeah, we started at the same time. We had a lot of fun. So he, he went to be a doctor, huh, mm -hmm. to pay for his school? He went to school. That's cool. A lot of people get out there, and even nowadays, you know, get out here and make make the money and they don't they hardly ever go back if they can stay busy you know no nah, he always had the goal though all yeah. his life you know he's always gonna do that yeah anyway now y'all know a little bit about andy i'm sure we'll be hearing from him uh from time <laughs> to time but yeah all right just cut us loose go back to the trailer try to warm up hope y'all enjoyed meeting Devin and uh and andy and andy's helper there like I said, hopefully we'll be hearing from them some more throughout uh, the rest of this job here. But uh, thank you guys for coming along with us today. Remember, learn something every day. We'll see y'all next week.